Hello YouTube! So, yeah, downstairs now and uh, let's talk to these scientists. I'm developing new kinds of Pokeballs, but I haven't made much headway. Oh wow, that's a Pokemon app! Ken Bowders, or Solar, our president, desired to learn about the feelings of Pokemon. Would you like me to describe its features in detail? No, no, I think you'll find out just by using the Pokemon as yourself. Huh? I'm not even gonna use it. It's not that, it's not that important an item. We're developing a device for Pokemon Pokemon, but we haven't had much success. Eh, it doesn't surprise me. <laughs> I'm trying to develop a device that officially reproduces the dreams of Pokemon, but it's not going well. Yeah, it's like talking to an animal is even easier than, still easier than having to represent its dream visually. <laughs> oh no, what now? What's that we'll work on developing next? Our company allows us to make our own, make our inspirations into reality. One could ask for a better environment as an engineer. Yeah, so basically they, it's kind of like, like Google. I don't know if they still are like that or if it's only how they used to be, but. Kind of like Google, where basically the engineers can just do whatever they want, and um, at least part of the time. So that that's actually a pretty cool way to have a work environment. I've been trying to develop a device, device that resurrects Pokémon from fossils, and it's working. Yeah, so I'm gonna get a fossil at some point, and I can, uh, if I have an empty slot in my party, give it to that guy. Hi there, you're always welcome here. Yeah, okay. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, they started off as uh, as a device for uh, or as a uh, quarrying company. I've been developing an ad feature for a Pokemon. And it turned out great. Steve, may I see your Pokemon? The one that our president gave you. There you go, Steve. A new feature for named Magical to your Pokemon. Using the Magical feature, you can chat with people who have been registered in your Pokemon. Yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, so now I need to do the Magical thing, which honestly, like. I rarely really do. Oh, Steve, you called me here. The Pokemon must be working properly. Other people will be restless too, so try to own that. Good, good, you seem to be quite happy. Hmm. How could I know that? It's because I'm looking down at you from my office window. Ha ha ha, see you again. Okay, so, yeah. Okay, then I get to work. Okay. Yeah, so now I'm just gonna uh, go to Mr. Briney's. Oh, yeah, first I have to bail many. I forgot that one. Yeah, cause, and after that I'm going back to Mr. Briney's cottage and, uh, yeah, basically just, um, sail about, uh, let's see, Pokeballs, do I need any, uh, yeah, I can buy 10, so, I'll just do that. It really is kind of like, a mean move, I guess, to... Only buy Pokeballs when you get can get an extra Pokeball for free, but I mean it comes in handy when you have to travel a long distance without coming across a Pokemon, so Oh yeah, now she Oh hey Steve! You had a match call feature put in your Pokemon! Let's register each other so we can contact one another at a time. Yeah, so everyone magically has Pokemon now. <laughs> Yeah, now I've registered me in the Pokemon. Oh, by the way, I passed Mr. Brian in paperwork boots. I guess he's on his way home to his cottage by the sea. How's your Pokedex coming along, Steve? Mine's looking very really decent. Sorry about the old panel. You just became, <coughs> became a trainer, Steve. What's going to lose? Yes, you are. But she always claims like she's not, not going to lose him. She's not. Well, she, she is sometimes challenging, but she's never really, like, so strong that you're like, oh my god, like, like, uh, like, how am I gonna, you know, cope with this? I mean, Torkoal is a pretty strong Pokemon, like, I'm not sure if, uh, I'm not sure if I'm uh, gonna be able to beat him with just my Ninkeda. 
not sure I'm gonna beat him, like, or her. <laughs> the reason I don't automatically say it is because we don't... Like, we refer to animals and inanimate options, uh, um, objects with him in Dutch, like... At least generally. It's not really like... I don't know. I don't know, it's... It, we don't really have as many... Um, neutral... Things that have neutral pronouns. I don't quite know why, it's probably some historical grammatical reason, but yeah. If you're wondering why, when I refer to stuff, I uh, tend to overuse <laughs> him a little, uh, that's why. Oh wait, that was kind of stupid. Then again, he only does curves, which... I mean, yeah, the high defense is kind of annoying, but... Let's be real, the low speed... Like, Torkoal speed is so... Um, is, uh, is so... Um, um, yeah, historical speed is so low that it's basically become a major weakness because you can just use items that uh, or attacks that make him uh, make him flinch and and you're good. So. Now, Mudkip, which I have to admit is kind of a stronger adversary, really. Although, I'm not sure, I'm not sure who's stronger, Mudkip or Torkoal. They're both pretty decent, like, they're... but neither of them is like insanely strong either. Growl, growl, growl. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, battles with uh, Stanley are always a bit boring. Oh yeah. One thing I also forgot to mention. Um, yeah, I went fishing uh, last weekend. Like last weekend from the time of recording, is it? Which is um, slightly. Uh, Slightly over a week ago by the time this goes up. Um, uh, we went looking for Burbot, which is. Oh, yeah, yeah. So she explains who in Spanish. But uh, yeah, we, we went looking for Burbot, which is not a very uh, endangered or rare fish worldwide, but in Holland locally, it's mostly extinct. Uh, we went to a place where there was a, uh, where they have been reintroduced, and we mostly tried to find babies of them too, uh, because it has not yet been proven that this uh, reintroduced population is actually, you know, a proper population with reproduction and everything, uh, which poses kind of a problem. And yeah, we still. Uh, we only caught one adult, which at least means they're surviving, I guess, but it would be cool if they actually reproduced. Burbot, by the way, is... It looks kind of eel-like, but actually it's a freshwater species of cutfish. Um, um, and yeah, so we caught that. We caught four European eels, which is also really important because those are worldwide critically endangered and also pretty rare in Holland at this point. Um, one of which had a record length of, I believe, 77 centimeters, if I remember correctly. Like, I could be wrong on that, but like, it was really huge. Um, like, record length, uh, length. None of us had seen. Uh, an eel that size before, and one of us is 
within my nature group basically like best fisherman so he was also the one who organized this whole fishing trip so <laughs> yay for him um um uh, we also found a tench which is a i believe it's a carp like fish and it's it's a bitch from his boots in the US bitch player. It's very juicy. Yes. Okay, she gave me a medical seat. Um, but yeah, um, it's a carp like fish and it also had like a record length of, I believe, like 48 centimeters or something like. Also, really huge. Um, uh, what else? The, uh, oh, yeah, we've got four adult pikes. Uh, Northern pike. Actually, a species I have used in um, in some um, videos before. Um, they're, they're, they're not at all endangered or rare or anything like that, but it's just still... Um, it's just still cool to catch them because they're really beautiful. We got a lot of uh, European perch. Also a lot of... Like a lot of babies and a lot of full grown ones. And that's kind of the same uh, story as the bite really. And then a lot of you know smaller fish who are well we caught one fluvial sculpin and one I kind of forgot what the English name was. It's Serpeling in Dutch. But at least like neither of them is like endangered but they're kind of rare in Holland. Fluvial scalping for reasons of actual endangerment. It's um, um, there's invasive uh, fish coming in from the Danube uh, riverine system because Holland's all the Rhine riverine system. And after a canal has had been dug between the Rhine and or yeah between the Rhine and Danube riverine systems. Uh, the noobs fish started uh, coming in and they started uh, yeah, being invasive and out competing fluvial sculpins. And serpling is a fish that just thrives in like central European type streams. Whereas. Um, <coughs> uh, and Holland doesn't ju just doesn't have a lot of those. But other than that, just common fish. But yeah. With that uh, three days on fish, I'm gonna end the episode. So uh, next episode, we're gonna talk to Mr. Briny, um, ask him to take us to uh, Duford, and then uh, yeah, that's uh, all gonna happen next week. So uh, see you later.